you're an insurance agent that wants to transform your sales career in five easy ways, well, don't look for things to be easy. Simple yes, easy no, and I'm going to drop it to you today. And I hope you're excited to engage with more consumers in a more positive and hopefully more profitable way. Because let's face it, you didn't jump into final expense unless you broke, right? For to X. This is. My name's Jason. I'm your friend in the industry, and I'm so blessed to have just loved this industry and be a partner with life, Medicare, and annuities, face-to-face, -face, but more importantly, in the telespace. So free resources for your taking at jasonfinalexpense.com. No matter what work family you align with, we appreciate you watching this content, and we hope you find value in it. So number one, if you're taking notes, is attitude depicts your level of altitude in this industry. And a lot of times, we're going to go from this like, I'm high enough to hunt ducks with a rake, kind of a mental mindset. Yay, this is great, to yowzers. This stinks. This person over the phone just told me they never filled out this lead. This person told me they don't want to buy. What is wrong with these leads, right? Our attitude can go from being like a hero, I'm here to save you, till holy beep, what did I do to myself in final expense telesales? Have you felt this? Your attitude is going to actually affect your altitude. How high are you going to go in your career? Well, we've got to keep a positive attitude so that we can have a positive outlook at what we're truly going to do. This, my friends, is so important. Your attitude, number one, is so important because your attitude affects your emotions. And you've got to understand people buy based on emotion and then they back it up with one thing and that's going to be logic. So attitude is something that you've got to really guard. You've got to be intentional about this you cannot feed yourself crap right right in this state of selling you've got to inject you've got to be intent on helping the client win and that is based on you having a good attitude because this industry is performance based and if you put on a negative performance you're not going to have a positive outcome i'm just being real with you and even when you have the greatest attitude attitude by itself is not going to pay your bills right would you agree with that put it in the comments if that's the case but yourself up. It's tough enough by itself with all the negativity that you're going to be faced with. So don't look at the negative every day. You've got to look at positive, powerful things. You're going to get enough negative when you get on that phone line. So attitude is everything. Build yourself up into a place that you've got a smile on your face. The power of the smile is so important and so intentional to you surviving and hopefully thriving in an industry where 90% of the agent force kind of gets fooled into the industry thinking, oh, final expense telesales, get rich quick. This is great. I'm going to make millions and I can just spend a couple minutes on the phone, right? Wrong. Attitude is important. You've got to get into that mindset of I'm going to be a 1099 insurance producer. That means I got to do some things that look like hard work, smell like hard work. And even at the gym, if you are lifting heavy things and getting some good things, hopefully as an end result, the in betweensies is going to stink like sweat, right? You've got to know that you've got to have a positive mental mindset and you're going to embrace the suck. You're going to embrace the stink. You're going to embrace the grind so that you can get what you say you want. You're going to get dirty. You're going to get like a tar baby when they say, I never asked for this. I didn't send this in. This must be a joke. I thought this was free coupons from Walmart, whatever they say. All right. You've got to focus on a right attitude more than anything. It's important. Now, number two, if you're taking notes, is communication. Communication is key, especially with final expense telesales. This is like painting a Picasso, and I'm no artist, all right? But communicating is truly an art form. How you say things is important. No different than if you're communicating with a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's not sometimes what you say. 
It's how you speak it, how you say it, how you communicate it either gets you an amazing night or day, right, or puts you in the doghouse and you're on the couch. It's not always the words. It's how you communicate and articulate these words. This is something where sometimes things really work well because we have a positive attitude. We've got a proven power script. We're ready. We're scripted. We're in a place where we can be sincere because we're not nervous about what are the next set of words I need to speak. Communicating is important, all right? So you've got to put the time in to a script. You've got to put the time in to train. Don't expect results when you really haven't gotten down and dirty and practiced with your work family. You've practiced this, and you've drilled this, and you've rehearsed this. This is taking the time to paint a picture. Words are important to you getting what you want, and it's not just us speaking words at the consumer. We've got to take our time. Communicate articulate, paint pictures so that they can see the value that you bring. This is building trust, building emotion, building value, as opposed to every other salesman that thought final expense telesales scripts uh, were just like this or that, and then they got put right on their face because they found themselves with no communication skills. They rushed things. They didn't take the time to really deliver value for the consumer. They were just rushing the script, trying to get a sale, and that's going to hurt you and harm you in this industry. So communication is key. Take your time. Paint the pictures like Picasso verbally, not like a toddler that maybe only a mom would hang on to and the rest of y'all would throw in the trash. All right. So time is important. Take your time to articulate an actual word picture. Now, number three with final expense telesales, if you want the magic to happen, you can't make stupid pauses. You can't have this weird, awkward silence. When you're speaking to a person and then you have this long pause, if you're in person, pretty darn powerful, you have a silence in a moment like that in a sales call. Even if it's a couple seconds, what you're going to hear normally is the person hanging up. Are you there? Are you there? Silence is deafening. And it normally creates a dial tone on your end. You've got to be cautious. This is not face-to-face -face insurance sales. This is why it's so important to vet your trainer, vet your agency. We've got many MDRT, Million Dollar Roundtable producers that partner here, and I'm so proud of them. But guess what? They're good at their attitude. They're good at communicating. They're good at taking their time with the client and the prospect. They're okay when negative comes. They don't let it stick to them. They just serve that next person with a proven script. It's so important that you don't use pauses unnecessarily in telesales, that when you communicate, you don't use silence in some awkward way. It's very easy to get awkward in this industry, especially when we're new. That's why you've got to have a good agency, a good work family that spends countless hours with you like what we do for our agents nationally. And even when we consult with other agents and other agencies, it's so important that we train properly so that you've got the best chance for survival. Performance-based businesses are tough to swallow for somebody that thinks selling final expense telesales is easy and requires no effort and requires no skill set or work involved. Those that make the wealth in this industry, they work at it. They work on getting a little better. But pausing and moments of silence can really slay you in this industry. So get good at not having this silence. It's a vacuum that will take your very success away. Weird pauses are also bizarre. It's not normal. So you got to be careful and cautious on how you use pauses to make sure that they're powerful pauses versus being awkward. All right. Number four is you've got to get really good at the art of questions or you're going to question yourself of why the beep did I even get into this stinking industry? I haven't made a buck yet. And you may not make a buck. If you don't have a good attitude, if you don't have good communication skills, if you don't know how to use pauses and silence, very sparingly, you're going to get slayed because it's not about being a pushy salesman. Here's my product. Buy from me. Here's my product. Buy from me. That puts a lot of folks off, right? I hate slimy salesmen and pushy salesmen. It just drives me crazy. But you've got to be able to learn, and you've got to be able to listen about what the client wants you to do for them if you want to make dollars. It's not about you. It's about learning about what the client wants. What does the client want or need? from you? What does the client want for you to do to solve that problem? You've got to listen first, just like in your marriages, just like in your relationships. Shut the mouth. 
listen, ask questions, but you're never going to learn about the client if you don't ask the right questions. You ask the wrong questions, it's going to be like putting your hand in the middle of a door hinge and a toddler's going to walk by and swing that sucker 50% of the times in the wrong direction and take your bones okay, into a place where you're going to go see a doctor and insurance agents. If you ask the wrong questions, if you don't have these word trails in front of you, you're going to ask the wrong question. The client's going to go, nope, and you're going to go, oh, why did I do that? you got to be careful in how you ask questions. You've got to ask the right questions and then listen once again and learn what they want you to do for them. Questions control calls, agents that are controlling and are all about talk, 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 sell, sell, sell. Yeah, you may sell that policy, but you're not going to keep it. So questions are important. Make sure that you've got a laundry list of the right questions. Make sure that you've gone through hours deep training so that you don't go through the ouch effect, which is still an ouch effect even when you're properly trained. When you touch a lead and they say, I didn't ask for this. I don't want nothing. I'm not concerned. I don't give a crap about beep. I never filled out a lead. This is all a farce. That's not truly the truth. You want to make it across the finish line? Well, you better know what the journey looks like. Good positive attitude, good at communicating. Take your time. Don't rush anything. Have silence almost never. Only use it in certain instances because then it's going to be powerful, but you've got to get to a question <sighs> period of time where you know when this time comes, the question comes out. When this is spoken, I'm just going to lean in, listen, and learn, and then I'm going to ask a question instead of going, why in the world am I getting punished this way? Sometimes it's that we asked the wrong questions. Sometimes we asked the questions with the wrong intent. It's important. You can say the same words and say it differently, and it's dynamically felt on the other end of the phone in a completely different environment. You've got to get into a place where you understand how to communicate, back to tip number two, and use empathy, not sympathy. Nobody wants sympathy, but empathy is powerful in communication and in agents that have the best chance of survival. MDRT agents, they know how to have a positive attitude when everybody else is blaming the lead. MDRT agents know how to communicate and articulate powerfully as well because they take their time. They build upon this. You're looking at the base, and they're building the picture, the case for the problem that their product may or may not solve. Take your time. Don't use silence, but ask the right questions so that you can have the right answers, allowing you to hopefully take some action to sell a policy. That's a byproduct of you being the best in the industry. Now, number five, once you've had a great attitude, you've got good communication, you don't use silence, use it very sparingly, you're great at questions, you've got your power script, you've got your objections locked and loaded, you're ready to learn about how you can serve the client. Well, my friends, number five is powerful. Assume the sale. You're going to lose 100% of the sales that you don't ask for. I have contracted and trained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of agents nationally all right, that align here in our national agency. But I've also been in a position where, you know what, I've seen a lot of agents not ask for the business. And then they're like, no one bought from me. Well, you didn't ask. You didn't ask for the business. You've got to assume the business in a way that's not awkward. You've got to assume the business like they actually maybe want what you're selling, and that happens because you're a positive, powerful person that gets painted as a slimy salesman. You've got to get beyond that because you're not that, all right? You've got to get good at communicating and getting to know the heart of the client so that they can have a relationship with you and fix the problem. It's all about the problem. If you're good at painting a picture about what their life looks like, if they owned coverage with you, if you're really good at learning about them, you know what? You've got the right to assume the business and ask if they'd like to solve it with you. And you know what? If you spend the time, they'll probably take your hand and shake it. Half of getting your hand shaked is one person putting it out there. All right, they'll reach for you. You've got maybe some of the best companies on the planet, but you've got to put the best of yourself forward. Don't blame the leads. Build yourself up a little better every day. Don't beat yourself up because you had one call that you went textbook on and you did a great job, and then the person hung up on you. You can't control that. 
You know what you need to think about? Next, all right, next, next, next. Action will fix your problems. You've got to build trust, build value, build emotion, of course, but you've got to have lots of engagements. If you're the best agent on the planet and you don't get yourself into a position where you're like, um, well, what do I do? What do I do? You need to have a good mentor that says, you know what? I've made those mistakes. Don't go there. It got me hurt. Uh, you need to have a mentor. That's a million dollar round table that says, ooh, that's a mistake I made early in my career. Uh, try that if you want to feel what pain looks like. But the facts are this is better. That's not maybe the worst, but this is what works. Get a good mentor who can be vulnerable with you so that you can hopefully, not guaranteed, but hopefully have the success that you desire in an industry, like I say, that eats up 90 plus percent of the agent force. I want you to be a success story and not a statistic. I hope these tips bring you value today. Thank you for subscribing. And for those of you that have the notification bell on, we'll bring you as much as we can. And we appreciate you greatly. Take care of these good people. These prospects truly need you. Even when they're pouring into you the negative of, I didn't ask for it. I'm too busy. Mail it to me, etc. Know that you've got what it takes, my friends. And I appreciate you. We'll see you soon.